building people, if there's a building going up in your town, chances are the person who performed the site survey was certified to do that work. And if the building is going to be LEED, silver, gold, or platinum certified, you can bet that there's one or more LEED AP certified professionals working on the design team. But what about the lighting design? Over the years, one of the challenges of the lighting design profession is how does one qualify whether or not the lighting designer has the experience and expertise to deliver the often complex and challenging work of a lighting designer. One of the credentials that is gaining a lot of momentum and adoption is the CLD, the Certified Lighting Designer Credential. And we're pleased today to be joined by the Vice Chair of the CLD Commissioning Board, Rose Maria Lair, to discuss it a little further. So Rose, hello and thank you for joining us today for five big questions. Hi Al, great to see you. And as my friend Charles Lynn used to say, it's good to be seen. It is good to see and be seen. And I'm so glad you had a chance to join us today. You know, um, the professional design work that, that you do and other um, architectural lighting designers do is so important. You've been a longtime member of the IALD and this has been a topic that's been discussed for many, many years. So tell us more about the CLD. It's gaining lots of uh, importance and acceptance and wanted to learn more about the CLD. So tell us why did it start and when did it start? The CLD began with a task force in 2010, and there were seven members from three countries, and we worked over four time zones. And it took five years to create and assemble the CLD, but there were two individuals that were very instrumental in its vision and its completion. And the first was Marsha Turner with the IALD, and the second was our credentialing expert, Judith Hale. Um, and Judith, without her, the CLD would not exist. And I just have to read her credentials because I think it's really important and it, and it provides, I believe, quite a bit of weight to the credential and how it was established. Judy Hale's a PhD, but she also has these three credentials that are a certified performance technologist, a CPT, um, she is a certified assessment and credentialing professional, a CACP, and an instructional designer developer certification, which is a CIDD. Those three alone are like off the charts for certification specialists and, and truly an expert. But what's really exciting about what Judy achieved once the CLD was created she won a outstanding human performance Im improvement award, which, which is an ISPI for creating a global evidence-based certification for architectural lighting designers, the CLD. She was awarded something from one of her associations for creating the CLD. So I think that backstory is really important. I think it brings a lot of credibil credibility to the CLD really went, um, went into it. And after five years, the CLD was launched in 2015. And we are now just about at 100 certified lighting designers. So it's well, taken a while, but we're getting there. We're really excited and um, it's happening. No, it's great. And I, I, I follow uh, CLD on Instagram and I see when you folks celebrate someone else who earns the credential and it's always awesome. It's usually someone who's um, you know, very qualified and, and probably well known throughout the industry as well. So it's, uh, it's awesome that you're doing that. And when, when we think about the, the who's, who's eligible, um, there's a high bar to achieve uh, the status. So who exactly is eligible to receive this credential? Well, a practice, practicing lighting designer that has three years of being a lead lighting designer. Now, typically, if you're a lead lighting designer, that means you have roughly five to seven years of experience. Um, you're probably a senior lighting designer in your firm. And part of the eligibility as a lead lighting designer is that you create the lighting design strategies, you, um, you know, present concepts to your clients and you attend meetings. You don't have to do all of the AutoCAD work or the renderings or the photometric calculations, but you see a project through its completion from conception through construction documents. And that's what, what our definition of a lead lighting designer is. And that's 
essentially the, the eligibility requirements. So we've learned a little bit about what it is, when it started, but what, what exact problem or problems does it solve? Well, I don't think it's a problem, but I think what it resolves is that what's important about it is that it raises awareness of lighting designers. You know, the IALD mission statement is to advance the global profession of lighting design. And what the CLD does is to raise awareness of lighting designers and the value that we bring to architectural projects. And <clears throat> I'm not sure you may know this, Al, but how many lighting designers are on projects in the built environment? What is that percentage? I suspect it's very, very low. So of course we can't be on every project, nor do we want to, but to promote the, again, the value of what an architectural lighting designer brings to a project, I think is, is really important. And that's what the CLD does. It elevates you know, the lighting design profession to the architectural community. So when this CLD designation becomes you know, the gold standard of credentials for architectural lighting designers, um, do, you, do you still see value for other credentials that are fairly popular and widely accepted, such as those offered by the NCQLP and the ALA? Absolutely. I believe a credential is a qualification. It's a professional achievement. So I think they're all important and they all have weight and merit. Um, for me personally, I think it was important to develop this credential for lighting designers. And my elevator speech has always been, the CLD is the only international credential of its kind outside of the medical profession. It was created by lighting designers, for lighting designers. It's reviewed by lighting design peers in the architectural community around the world. And it is based on seven domains of practice. And a domain is really an activity or a function of uh, an area of knowledge, but it's something we do every day in our uh, tasks as lighting designers. So that's what the credential is based on. And the credential is based on competency. It's not an award submission. So it's not, it's not achieving excellence. It's really just, it's, it's, it's based on, um, it's the method of assessing competency against a standardized method of measurement um, to the seven domains of practice. And it's essentially an application that you fill out and that you answer questions to. And they must be clear and succinct answers, but it's based on a project. So I've always wondered why lighting designers are a little reluctant to fill out their application. Of course, it takes time. Any, any good things take time and, and there is an investment of your time and no one claims to have it, but we have to make it, right? You make time, you don't, or take time. Um, but it really is based on your, your, your portfolio and your work. And, and if you can summarize three to four projects, that's what you submit, your own work, answering questions. The, the photography doesn't even have to be professional. You can take photographs on your phone. And it's a pretty straightforward application. So I'm encouraging people to dig in and um, you know, give it a try and hopefully you'll complete it and we'll have more CLDs and raise the awareness of the lighting design profession. Well, those components you mentioned with respect to having the portfolio and the experience, it, it obviously puts this credential in a different category as others that might be well-respected and accepted out there as well. And there's a place for all of them, like you said. So when you think about um, what your group is doing to, to promote uh, the adoption of this, what's the more important mission right now? Is it to get more and more CLDs um, in, you know, to, 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 to become qualified or is it to drive acceptance and in, in having architects and end users and other people who hire lighting designers to be aware of this credential and, and demand or request it on their future project? What's, which, which, uh, which is the more important area? Well, they're, they're both important, Al, because I, I think that 
as a as the vice chair of the CLD commissioning board, it, it is my role to um, promote the CLD and, and get more certified lighting credentials. We need critical mass. Um, and ultimately, we will, you know, have impact in the industry. Um, but right now we're growing um, slowly, unfortunately, not to, not to my liking. Um, I like a little bit more fast pace, uh, but it, it's coming. And um, I think what, what COVID taught us was to be patient. So um, I was hoping during COVID more people would, would dive into that application and we'd see a greater onset of certified lighting designers. We have seen some, and you know, again, I'm staying very positive, but um, we must grow the CLD to have critical mass and to have to have impact in, in our industry. Well, my sense is that you are gaining that uh, that traction, and at some point you will achieve that critical mass. Sometimes these things take longer than one would hope or expect at the design phases of such a process. Um, but I know I was on your CLD.global website earlier, and uh, the, the names of the people, both uh, US and Canada and internationally across the, 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 the globe, um, are very uh, highly well-esteemed designers, um, yourself included, who I understand you were the first one in, in California to earn the credentials. So congratulations on that and many other things you've achieved over your career. You. We're so excited to learn about the CLD. Thank we you. look forward to its um, continued growth and adoption. And we thank you, Rosemary, for joining us today for five big questions. Thank you, Al. I will mention that the CLD represents 20 countries around the world. So we're really proud of that. It's truly an international credential. And there are some individuals that, that are the only CLD in their country. So that's, that's very exciting for them. And I have a question for you, Al. All right. Once we get back to in-person activities, are you gonna continue your virtual interviews? Are you gonna go back to print? Are you gonna do YouTubes or live interviews? What, what is your preference, Al, for um, this type of format and how you're gonna move forward and move better, get better? You know, Rose, you, um, you talked about how people are making, um, you, you expect people to make adjustments during COVID, uh, uh, do more things, establish different skills perhaps. So one thing I've been working on is I've had a choreographer who's helping me create a TikTok channel for Inside Lighting. So you're gonna see me in lots of dance moves delivering lighting news and information to the industry you're in a way that's never been done. You're lying. Yes, I am. Ah. So. Uh, you're going to see these. You're going to see these interviews continue and other I'm shenanigans. Like a choreographer, I love that. <laughs> you know, one thing that doesn't come across here is that I'm six foot That's five, and if you've ever seen a six foot five <clears throat> guy dance, usually you look at him not wow. because he's a great dancer. <laughs> well, I will tell you something, Al. I studied dance. I was a dance minor, and so tall guys were always. Um, trying to be recruited in, in dance because they had the ability to lift and oh. they could jump higher. So when you said choreographer, I was like, oh, really, you're working with the choreographer? And I didn't know you were six foot five. So good for you. There we you're go. almost well, a doorway, a doorway six, eight. So yeah, can you dunk yeah, a basketball? Exactly. Can you dunk a basketball? You know, I, I think I hold the record for being the tallest guy at North Andover High School to be cut from the basketball team. So I was an aspiring basketball player, but never had the skills or dedication to, uh, to make the varsity team. Are you from Massachusetts? Yeah. Cool. So we're still recording. So if, if people have hung in there long enough, this is like the, um, during the credits of a movie and you get like bonus content that's ridiculous. I love that. Thank you for sticking with us, everyone. So uh, we'll see you next time for five big questions. Thanks, Rose. Hey there, we really enjoyed that discussion. We hope that you did as well. Be sure to click that big LED logo next to me. And what that'll do is subscribe you to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next five big questions interview. And YouTube subscribers always receive an early preview to the next interview before we even post it on the Inside Lighting website. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.